Um, for me, my story starts off like most people that, that suffer from addiction. Um, I grew up in a home down in eastern Prince Edward Island, uh, St. Peter's Bay. My, uh, again, for those who, who don't know me, my name is Stephen McGinnis, but I grew up in a, in a home where, where alcohol was, was around every corner. Um, it was, you know, a, it was always there. Um, I know my, my dad uh, has, his own, has his own troubles with it and stuff, and it was something that was, it'd be at every family gathering. It would be during the weekdays. It'd be, there was a lot of good memories I remember with it, but, you know, there's also, you know, a lot of, a lot of baggage and, and bad memories that come with it. So for me, growing up, uh, I, I played a lot of hockey when I was younger. Uh, I excelled at hockey at a young age. It was something that, um, that it seemed like everything was right in the world when I was playing well at hockey. My dad was a huge hockey fan, and uh, he was my hockey coach. And, you know, it, it seemed like throughout all the chaos that was, that was happening uh, at home behind closed doors when, when I was playing hockey and when I was playing well, you know, things, things were right in the world. Um, my dad was... My dad was happy, and my mom was my biggest fan, and so this was something that, uh, a narrative that I began to, to tell myself at a young age is, um, if I'm able to perform well and, and I'm able to play hockey at a, at a high level, you know, I, I can bring some stability, I, I can bring some, some peace within the household. It, uh, it was difficult growing up, you know, I, I felt that my love for my father, uh, to, I was always chasing the love of my father and, and, uh, and, and validation from him, and, and you know, it seemed like I'd get to one level, and or, or and then it would the bar would be set higher again, and I was never able to to achieve the the things that that he wanted, or at least the at least this was what this was this was from my perspective, and and this was how I felt it was. So I felt that you know I was I, I very much became a people pleaser, always trying to to achieve and perfectionism, and and really trying to strive. Um, so, you know, obviously when failure later on in my life came up, it, it obviously caused a lot of, a lot of issues for me. Uh, the age of 14, um, I left, I left home. I went to uh, Ontario on a hockey scholarship and, uh, a lot of, a lot of my, my, my baggage came along with me. Um, at that point I was, I was away from home. Um, at the age of 14, it was, I kind of got into a little bit of little bit of drinking, uh, smoking cigarettes and stuff like that, but nothing was ever was was anything really serious. Just kind of kind of the way it was, the people I hung around with and stuff like that, and and so it was an opportunity for me to go to Ontario um, was something that was encouraged to kind of they say to get away from that and and you know and, and hopefully to be able to continue to pursue my hockey career. So my my three years of of up in Ontario. Uh, from the outside looking in, everything was good. Um, you know, I had, I excelled at hockey, uh, multiple sports awards for golf, uh, softball, hockey. Um, graduated with uh, the Bronze Duke of Edinburgh. Graduated in honors, and and you know, from the outside looking in, everything everything looked like everything looked good. But there was a lot of there's a lot of things behind the scenes that that happened for me over those course of those three years. It was in my grade 10 year that I uh, was was first introduced to marijuana. Um, first couple times it, it, it was it was offered to me. You know, I was I, I stayed away from it. But at one point, I I did I opened that door and and it was it was something that you know it, it's taken me taken me over ten years ten years of my life to be able to finally shut that door. Um, uh, but that was something that it, it really started started uh, started living this kind of dual lifestyle. It'd be at the rink. I wanted to be. I want to be someone with integrity, someone with reliable, someone who's care, someone who has good character, and but then off the ice, it was you know, I'd be, these became motivations for me, uh, smoking marijuana, partying on weekend, um, you know, kind of living this reckless, reckless life. Uh, throughout those years, nothing really, you know, nothing really happened um, in terms of, you know, it was something that I was able to maintain that. And, and then I, I spent another year in Quebec, uh, similar circumstances, was uh, excelled in hockey, excelled academically. Everything was, everything was going well, but I was living a life off the ice that was, that was very, you know, that, that didn't line up on, on the person who I was on the ice. Uh, throughout my, I came back to the Maritimes um, when I was 19, 
19 years old, 19 and 20, and I played two years in the junior A league here. And that's when I, I stopped going to school. I was just playing hockey, a lot more free time on my hands. And, and things kind of started to, to unravel a little bit. It was my, the year following that, I played for the UPI Panthers. And uh, it was, I, I got cut from the UPI Panthers. I broke up with my long-term girlfriend at the time. And I got a DUI all in a span of about three months. And that was when kind of the house of cards that I was living in kind of crashed to the ground. Um, but even, even throughout that, you know, there was, that was the first kind of tough consequences that I had. But, you know, the reality that I, I wasn't living in reality, you know, I was still living in denial within it. I still didn't think that there was any issues on my, on my, on my end. Very much played the victim, very much pointed to other people saying, oh, it was this, this person's fault or if, if this is the way I was raised or so on and so forth and just continued to push that blame on. And then uh, went down to Alabama for a year, played hockey down there. And that's when, that's when things really started to unravel for me, uh, drinking, drinking on the daily, um, you know, still, still playing hockey at a high level, but was something that, you know, was just, was, was living a double standard in so many ways. The year following I came back from, from Alabama, it was 2019, and um, I, I, I came back with a lot of unhealthy living habits, uh, smoking weed, drinking, um, just constantly had to be under the influence of something every day to kind of to get myself up out of bed. And it was actually, I got invited down to a rec hockey tournament down in Morrell. Um, and I was down there, uh, was on the ice and I couldn't even stand up. I was, uh, I was so intoxicated, uh, which, was, which, was, which was difficult. Um, at that point, uh, you know, I, I had some family members there, I had some friends there. No one kind of, no one kind of, uh, Everyone just kind of, you know, left me, and I felt pretty lonely with that. So I ended up, it was uh, not, not one of my, probably one of my lowest moments in my life is I jumped in the vehicle behind the wheel, and on the way home that evening, I, rolled my, I went off the road at high speeds, rolling, ro uh, hitting a culvert, rolling my vehicle multiple times um, into a telephone pole. I was cut out with the jaws of life. Uh, by the grace of God, you know, I, I was... I was I, I didn't come out with a scratch. Um, I put myself on the x-ray table that night, uh, kind of, again, just my, my stubbornness and, and not really wanting to admit that there was anything going wrong, but you know, for about the month, two months after that, I was bedridden, um, had uh, severe whiplash in my back, couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't even put my own socks on and stuff like that, so it was, it was, it was difficult. But, and then I ended up having to serve be, because of that would be my, my second DUI in three years. I ended up having to go and serve uh, a stent at Sleepy Hollow, which was a little over 30 days. And, and within that, within that desperation, you know, that's when um, I actually turned to the Bible. And it was uh, the book of John was recommended to me. And it brought me a lot of comfort within that situation. I was, I was raised Catholic. Um, I was raised in the church, but I wasn't raised with the Lord. Um, I was, you know, didn't have a relationship with them. Uh, did, it was more of a religious practice, go to church. We, we listened, to, listened to things, but it didn't add up. It would be, hey, there's, this is being presented to us, but then back home, or the way that I was living, it never, it never went hand in hand. It was just lip service in, in so many ways. So, but I do, I do still cherish that. I value that because I know that there was, there was still a seed planted there. There was, there was a... Uh, I knew I knew about God. I didn't know who He was, but I knew about Him. And and like I said, years later, in that desperation in uh, in jail, I turned to the Bible, and it gave me some comfort uh, within that. Um, but then, even after coming out of jail, uh, there was there was there was a struggle still within. I was still living a life. Uh, went back out, continued to drink, continued to use, um, and it was it was difficult. Uh, it was difficult those years. As I began, um, I, I began coming to faith works, coming to the Bible studies and and prayers, and uh, as well as, as well as the service. And that is when you know God really started to grab a hold of me. The conviction of the Holy Spirit fell over me, and I knew that I was was living a life that that wasn't that wasn't right. Um, and throughout that time, I also uh, met Cassie. Um, I'm sure some of you people know her. We actually we have a daughter together. She's Emma just is a little over two years old now, um, but that's when when Emma came on scene for me. That is when things really started to get serious. Uh, it was I was still still 
trying to do whatever I could to continue to live the life that I wanted to live. And, but, you know, God was pulling me in another direction. And, uh, but, you know, God just showed up in my life in such a powerful way. When Emma, after Emma was born, I knew, that, I knew that there had to be something done. So it was actually in August 20, 2022, I checked myself into uh, Teen, Ch- Teen Challenge, which is over in Memory Cook. And it was a year-long program over there, a uh, faith-based program. We uh, forfeit a lot of our things, like you know, no, no cell phone, no internet access, uh, Bible studies, and, and it was something that was, it's, it's, it's a, it was a tough program. Uh, not going to sugarcoat it by any means, but it was, it was the most rewarding program that's most, most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life. You know, God just continued to show up and continued to strengthen me throughout that. Um, after I graduated the program in August, I ended up doing a six months internship there, which was... I uh, was, was within the spiritual formation department and was helping giving back to some of the newer guys that were coming into the program. And that kind of just brought me up until March here. So now I'm back on the island. I'm uh, going to be going fishing with my father this spring. And, and I've also, throughout that time as well, developed a, a partnership. And I'm, I'm going to be working with Athletes in Action uh, this summer and next year as well, which is a sports ministry, a part of Power to Change. So I'm grateful to have that opportunity where God is God is redeemed. Where yeah, where God has redeemed my hockey and my, and and sports. It was I coached Andrew's hockey growth growing up and and things like that. But it was and you know spent a lot of years there. But there was a sense of entitlement that I had. There was there was things that I thought that you know I thought I deserved that I didn't realize that how how blessed I was to have all these opportunities. And, you know, it, I think the biggest thing for me was, was understanding, you know, the spiritual warfare and, and, and with God, right, uh, how, how it's so important that I need to have God's truths and God's promises in order to combat those lies and take every thought captive and make them obedient to the Lord is, is something that I do daily. And, and even, even today, you know, is before coming up is, is the enemy the enemy can be on you, and he inserts those thoughts, and he comes up and says that you don't have anything to say, or what you what what you're saying doesn't have any value. But you know, it's I truly believe that there's that that God has God has brought me here today to 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 speak into your guys' lives, and if there's if there is anyone today that that's struggling with with addiction or anything like that, I would I would love to I would love to talk to you or answer any questions that you have. And,